G bros. Bryant makes stereo power amps and they have matching controls, bro. So does the PS100 run in stereo or what, bro? All right, well, that's a fair question. Uh, but first things first, welcome back to our series of videos where we're going ahead and we are answering the most commonly asked questions about the power station line. And in this installment, we're answering a question about the PS100, uh, where people tend to look at this thing and they see the uh, rows of identical controls and uh, they know that there's a power amp involved under the hood. It's a little mysterious, a little magical. They go, huh, fry it, huh? You guys build stereo power amps. Maybe, just maybe, I could run this thing in stereo. I'd run my whole rig in stereo with just this box. And uh, spoiler alert, you can't. Uh, but we're gonna have Steve come on here, who's the designer of this thing. And uh, he's gonna deliver a soliloquy about the nature of questions that the company gets, as well as go a little bit deeper into this question at hand. And then I'll come back around at the end and I'll do my best to wrap it up and uh, explain exactly why the PS-100 does not run in stereo. So yeah, we get a lot, asked a lot of unusual questions about the power station, uh, probably more than any other product. And I suppose we, we could take the, the view that with a sort of an innovative product and a successful product, it's probably natural that we're gonna reach a larger uh, audience than the, the normal group of people that we normally interact with on any given day. So the nature of the questions can be really interesting sometimes. I guess that's just the byproduct of doing something really interesting. When we make a product that is really good and really lands on people, we don't generally hear much about it. They go out there, they work, people are happy with them, and they just kind of go out in the void. We only hear about things when they're problems. At the power station, we hear about all the kinds of things that people sort of envision the way they might use it. So that's interesting that we get this kind of feedback. It tells me that people are thinking about, hey, if I can do this, maybe I can do this. And if I do this, maybe I can do that. Some of those questions are like, oh, this again? Others of those are like, oh, you know what? We didn't actually sort of think about that. And that gave rise to um, the idea of using, for example, the power station as, uh, as a way to get power amp mojo into a preamp using the self attenuation mode, which there's a video about that. So I won't get into that too deeply, but uh, that was really an interesting thing and it really works and it's really unusual. Um, for another person that asked about why the line out doesn't work, uh, when you just use it as a pre as as a power amp for a preamp, well, if you use it in the uh, self attenuating mode, then the line out will work if you just use it with a preamp. So th there's always these angles to it, and then there's the people that go, well, if it could do this, it should do that. And over the years of making multi feature, multi function amplifiers, we get. We, I, I get the feeling that people just sort of like, if you can do this, then you ought to be able to do this and this and this, which is, I suppose, uh, people saying, uh, you must, you had good ideas here, you probably have more ideas that we don't know about yet. Maybe we do. That's, uh, it's interesting that the feedback we get sort of can inspire taking a product to a new place or even spin off of another product. So we're getting a lot of interesting stuff like that. Uh, how practical all of these ideas are, it depends on uh, your point of view when you're pitching the idea or the thought or the question to us versus what we think we can practically accomplish in a product. Like, so if you're asking for the power station like the PS100, for example, to be two of everything, uh, my first inclination is to say, you mean all in one box? Because for example, the power station basically has two sets of controls, so two of what the PS2 has, but only those two things, not two reactive loads, not two power amps. Uh, it's not gonna be automatically a stereo power amp, a stereo switcher, a amp switcher, a, a dual load, you know, it could. It's no way it's gonna be in this size box, but we don't honestly know if you're thinking that way when you pitch that question, or if you're just saying, what would it take to do that? So 
uh, we, we try to like be as open-minded as possible about some of the questions uh, so that we don't like talk down to people but there are times where you just wonder did you read the manual are you really thinking about what you're asking for or are you just going hey you guys are geniuses why don't you like be 10 times more genius and like okay so once uh once i figure out how to defy the laws of physics and time and space yeah maybe that'll put us on a whole new trajectory but i don't see that happening anytime soon <laughs> All right, back to the PS100. The way we're not gonna conceptualize this is as a stereo amplifier product. Um, so it's not like a 292 or a 252 or an LX2. Those are stereo power amplifiers and that's a totally different type of product. Um, those are actually like having two power amps under the same hood. And that's how we're able to send one side of the stereo image out to this cabinet and then the other side of the stereo image out to this cabinet and never the twin shall meet. The PS100 is more akin to a regular mono um, guitar amplifier that just has two preamp channels. So like if you conceptualize you know, like a Mesa dual rectifier, um, two lines, real clean, um, identical controls um, that are just controlling what's happening in the preamp. But whatever's happening within those two preamp modes, um, the end result is still being piped through the same mono power section. Same deal here. Um, identical controls, we have volume controls and then frequency controls for the power sections in, in its different modes, but in the end it's just being run out through a regular mono power section. You can use a power station within a stereo rig, and in fact uh, we have an episode coming up where we explain how to uh, use uh, the power station within a wet dry wet rig. But. Um, that's going to happen in another week. So um, until then, hopefully this episode was informative and helpful and maybe entertaining. And uh, we hope you like, subscribe, and hit the notification icon. And uh, otherwise, we'll see you in the next one. And thanks for tuning in. Ciao. <laughs>